It's Colin with Maker Farm. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot your ramps electronics. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you load your firmware on your electronics. After that, if you go and plug your power or your USB into your electronics and your LCD does not come on, um, then we're going to want to go ahead and unplug your power and next unplug your USB cable. The first thing that we're going to unplug from our electronics are the end stops. This is the most common cause for um, not having your LCD power on. If they're plugged in the wrong way, you will just not receive power. So go ahead and unplug those. Plug your USB cable in. If your LCD does light up now, then that means it is the end stops. Um, at that point, you can go ahead and unplug your USB cable and then make sure you look at your wiring diagram so that when you plug those end stops back in, you can make sure to plug them in the correct way. If you find that one of those end stops, anytime you plug it in, um, it does not let your LCD power on, then it's most likely a problem with your wiring of your end stop or it's just a bad end stop altogether. Then go ahead, plug your USB back in and you can double check to make sure that they are currently working again. If your LCD still doesn't power on, the next thing that we're going to go through and troubleshoot um, is whether it's a motor or a stepper driver. Uh, to do this, basically you're going to go through and unplug everything else from your electronics. So you're going to go ahead and remove all of the motor connections. You're also going to go through and remove those stepper drivers, which are these chips right here. So I'm going to unplug the extruder motor, the extruder stepper driver, and you can go ahead and plug that back in. See if the LCD power is on. Um, if it does, then that is probably a faulty stepper driver. If it doesn't power on, then you can go through and remove the other ones. You can do them all at the same time or one by one, and that should let you uh, figure out which one of those is causing the problem. Um, if you don't get anything powered on with everything unplugged, we're gonna go and uh, basically remove the Arduino from the ramp shield, and we're gonna test just the Arduino. Uh, to do that, you'll go ahead and remove it, plug your USB cable in, you should see in your device manager on your computer, you should see it pop up. So there you go, it came up on mine, COM port 9. You do may have to make sure that you have your driver installed to do that. If that did work, then we're going to go ahead and put the shield and the Arduino Mega back together. Make sure all the pins are aligned. You can have um, a whole set of those pins not actually going in to the uh, Arduino Mega like they should. If that happens, it's not going to work at all. Um, after you do that, then you can go ahead and plug the USB cable back in, and this is going to tell us if the ramp's shield is good. If your LCD comes on, then that means it's working. If it does not come on, most likely it's a problem with your ramp shield, or there's a pin bridged, or something like that. Now if you notice I'm getting a min temp error, if you ever get a min temp error, that just says that your hot end thermistor is not plugged in or it is faulty. So once I go ahead and plug that in, I'm going to push the reset button on the ramp shield. Now if you look at your LCD, as soon as it powers on, you're going to notice that there's going to be a temp down there at the bottom. That means my hot end thermistor is working. There's a zero temp for the heat bed. That means my heat bed thermistor is not plugged in. So you can go ahead and plug that thermistor in as well. Um, on the graphical LCD, which is the one you see here, the bottom temp is the actual temp, and the top temp is the target temp. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my USB cable in. Now we're going to look at our LCD once it powers up, and we're going to see if our uh, hot end and our heat bed thermistors are both currently working. And you can see right there it is. So that's good. Next thing we can do is we can plug stepper drivers back in. So it lights up. You can see it's booting, so that's good. Plug another one in.
Now I'm going to go ahead and plug motors back in. This is the extruder motor. Next one is going to be the Z motor. I'm only using one Z motor just for this video just to make it easier. Normally you'll have two. They'll both plug in there. Uh, this is going to be your Y motor. And then the last one is going to be your X motor. Um, if at any time when you're powering on your printer and you home your printer, if any of those motors go the wrong direction, all you need to do is unplug your USB cable and power and then just flip that motor connector around so it plugs in the other direction. Okay, and that powered on, so we're going to unplug our USB. So now we're going to plug in our power. Okay, now we're going to test our motors. To do that, we're going to use our LCD, and we're going to go in and uh, find the auto home command. As soon as we push auto home, the first motor that should be moving is going to be the X motor. You can see it turning there. As soon as you hit the X end stop, it will uh, stop. Then the Y is going to start turning. You can see that one's turning there. Do the same thing. You can hit your Y end stop, and that'll stop turning. And then the very last one is going to be the Z motor, and it's going to turn. When you hit it, it's going to stop, reverse, go back up, and then go back down until you hit it a second time. Now we're going to test if our hot end and our heat bed are working uh, for the heaters. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a multimeter. You're going to want to, want to set it to 20 DC volts because this is going to be DC, DC that we're going to be getting here. Then we're going to go, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure D10, D9, and D8 and make sure you're not getting any voltage. Um, if you're not getting voltage, then that is good because nothing should be heating right now. So you'll take your two leads, you'll just touch the two screw terminals there for D10, getting zero volts, so that is good. I'm going to do the D9, zero volts, and last D8, zero volts. Okay, now we're going to set the hot end temperature. We're going to set it to um, somewhere where it should be heating, so you can use your LCD to do that. Um, I'm going to set this to 180. You can see that light went on. That means that the hot end is heating, so now if I test for voltage at D10, we should be getting 12 volts, and we are getting 12 volts. Okay, now I'm just going to test D9 after that, so D10 is getting 12 volts, D9 is getting 0, which is good, and D8 is getting 0, which is good. I'm just going to go into the LCD, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the hot end off just by setting that temperature back to zero. Then I'm going to go and set the heat bed temperature on. And you noticed another light came on. So now we should be getting um, 12 volts at D8, which we are. And then we should be getting zero volts at D9 and zero volts at D10. Okay, so that is good. So now we're going to go through and set those temperatures back to zero. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to test D9. In the firmware I'm using, D9 is set up as a fan. Um, so I'm going to go th and through there and fan and turn that on. Other firmwares, it'll use it as an extruder heater for the hot end. So I'm going to get 12 volts at D9. That's good. Zero volts there and zero volts at D10. Okay, so that's perfect. Okay, now I'm just going to go and set the fan back to zero, so we should be getting zero volts there, and you'll see the light go off as soon as that happens. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go in and do a preheat. Uh, typically when you're printing, you don't need to do this. The G-code's going to do it all, but this is going to heat everything. So it's going to heat um, the hot end and the heat bed at the same time. So when we do this test, we should get 12 volts at D10, zero volts at D9, and 12 volts at D8. Okay, so those are all good. So now I'm just going to press the little reset button on the ramps itself. This just sets everything back to zero. If at this time, if you were to hit the reset and you were still getting voltage at any of those, it could be that one of the MOSFETs is blown. 
Okay, next is your kit will probably come with some little heat sinks. These are for the stepper drivers. On each stepper driver, you're going to see a little black chip. There's going to be some adhesive that came with that stepper driver that you'll put that heat sink right on that little black chip. Uh, they're not needed. You can make sure when you put them on to be careful because you can actually short out part of the chip, um, which now you know how to test for. Next, we're going to test for voltage um, coming into our electronics just to make sure that we're getting the correct voltage. Uh, we should be getting 12 volts here. This is for the heat bed, which is going to power D8. This is going to power everything else on your electronics, and you'll want 12 volts there as well.